ever wondered if you can use a scientific approach in learning Malay? Well, what I mean is that we can form a hypothesis, conduct an experiment, analyse the data and form a conclusion. Good news! Our teachers have done all that. My name is Frizana and today I shall share with you 8 scientific rules to guide you to answer Imbohan questions. Every answer in an Imbuhan question belongs to one of the following part of speech. Kata kerja or verb, kata nama or noun, and kata adjective or adjective. Therefore, to answer an Imbuhan question, students first need to decide which part of the speech the answer belongs. The first rule. The underlined word appears before a noun. For example, sekaligus main peranan penting dalam jawatan kuasa penduduk. Peranan is a noun. And thus, the underlined word main has to be turned into a verb as a noun in most instances follows a verb in a sentence. Now that you know the answer is a verb, what imbohan is required for a verb? This is the list of imbohan for verb. But it will be suffice for you to just remember this as they are used most predominantly in an imbohan exercise when compared to the rest. So, the answer for the example given here is memainkan. The second rule. The underlying word appears after a subject who can be a living entity or a non-living entity. For example, Ayah pesan agak adik pelajar bersungguh-sungguh. Langit cerah, meriah lagi sambutan kepulangan para jemaah haji. Both ayah and langit cerah are subject. While ayah is a living entity, langit cerah is not. However, both can exert an action. Thus, the underlying words pesan and meriah have to be turned into verbs. So, the answers for these examples are berpesan and memeriahkan respectively. The third rule. The underlying word appears after an object but before a subject or in between them in a passive sentence. A passive sentence is a sentence that emphasizes the object and its actions rather than an active sentence which emphasizes the subject or the entity that is accounted for the object or the action. For example, Rumah panggung warisan keluarga ubah elok ayah menjadikannya salah sebuah bangunan yang gah di kawasan itu. This is an example of a passive sentence and the underlined word is in between the object rumah panggung and the subject ayah. So, the answer for the example given here is di ubah elokkan. The imbuhan di kan is used for verb in passive sentence. The fourth rule, the underlined word appears in a pair with a verb separated by dan and atau. For example, Mengambil keputusan untuk berkongsi dan sebar amanah yang diberikan. Tidak pasti sama ada susah atau menyenangkan tugas musuh ketatnya. In the above examples, berkongsi and menyenangkan are verbs. appear in pairs with the underlined words separated by done and atau respectively. Thus, underlined words have to be turned into verbs because their pairing words, berkongsi and menyenangkan are verbs. 
So, the answers for these examples are menyebarkan and menyusahkan respectively. In summary, these are the four scientific rules to determine the answer of an imbohan question is a verb. The first rule, the underlying word appears at the beginning of the sentence. For example, Sangsi Arif semakin menebal apabila melihat Rita pulang jauh malam. In most instances, the starting word in a sentence is a noun. Now that you know the answer is a noun, what imbohan is required for a noun? This is the list of imbohan for noun. But it will be suffice for you to just remember this as they are used most predominantly in an imbohan exercise when compared to the rest. So, the answer for the example given here is kesangsian. The second rule, the underlying word appears after a verb. For example, Ibu meminta sa daripada pihak penganjur bahawa penyanyi popular itu akan datang. Ayah memberikan salin kad pengenalan kepada pihak sekolah. Meminta dan memberikan are verbs. And thus, the underlined words, sa and salin, have to be turned into nouns as noun in most instances follow a verb in a sentence. So, the answers for these examples are pengesahan and salinan respectively. In summary, these are the two scientific rules to determine the answer of an imbohan question is a noun. The first rule, the underlying word appears after a noun and names an attribute of the noun. For example, Kehadiran seorang pemimpin bilang memeriahkan lagi majlis itu. Jalan hala itu merupakan jalan mati. Majlis ramai itu dihadiri oleh ribuan orang daripada pelbagai pelosok masyarakat. Pemimpin, jalan, and majlis. Announce. And the underlined words bilang, hala and ramai have to be turned into adjectives so as to name the attributes of these nouns. Now that you know the answers are adjectives, what imbohan is required for adjective? This is the list of imbohan for adjective. So, the answers for these examples are terbilang, sahala, and keramayan respectively. The second rule, the underlined word appears after a verb and names an attribute of the verb. For example, Amar berdiri sahaja kerana tidak ingin disyaki oleh para pegawai kustom lapangan terbang Changi. Berdiri is a verb. And the underlined word sahaja has to be turned into an adjective so as to name the attribute of this verb. So, the answer for the example given here is bersahaja. In summary, these are the two scientific rules to determine the answer of an imbohan question is an adjective.